This is Marty from OwingsArt.com. That's O-W-I-N-G-S-A-R-T.com. And today I thought we'd take a look at a variety of different types of paper. Um, I've been getting a lot of requests uh, from subscribers and emailers and others just saying, hey, Marty, will you take a look at some different types of papers and tell us what you think of these different um, types of papers and what you use them for and how they're used and things like that. So I thought today I would start with a sort of a part one, and this is going to be watercolor papers. Now the good, uh, for the most part, I'll, I will check out though a few notebook papers too. The good folks over at Savoir Faire, which is a, an American distributor of art material, they sent me over some samples of different paper, as did the folks at wetpaintart.com, which is a local art store here in the Twin Cities metro area where I live uh, in Minnesota. But anyway, the folks at Savoir Faire sent me a bunch of different types of watercolor, including some Fabriano, uh, different types of Fabriano paper, and I wanted to test those out as well as some old standby uh, kind of sketchbook paper I use and, and sketching notepads I use, so Canson XL and a Canson Bristol. And I'll also check out um, some of my favorite types of papers from Stillman & Byrne. Uh, an American company that manufactures papers here too. Um, the question that I seem to get the most about papers is uh, what is the difference between cold press and hot press paper? So people see that label hot press or cold press on on a pad of paper or a block of watercolor paper and they go what, what does that mean? Well in the most basic terms cold press paper is more rough so it's going to have a, a, a bumpier texture, whereas a hot press paper is going to be very smooth, almost like a bristle. So if you're in, 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 in reference to papers, if you hear somebody say uh, hot press, that's going to be smooth, almost like a bristle paper, a very smooth uh, finish. And if they say cold press, it's probably going to be a little bumpier, a little bit more textured uh, paper. And, and, the, and the thickness of the paper can vary. You'll want to look for a weight on a paper. So uh, you, can, you can look for the GSM weight or the pound weight. And if you, if you deal in English measure like I do, um, looking for the pound weight is probably the best way to do it. Um, so this, I'm going to start out with a Fabriano Aquarell 25% cotton 90 pound paper. So 90 pound is a fairly... Uh, heavy paper. Um, the other thing is this is 25% cotton. Uh, if you look for paper, really high quality watercolor paper, look for 100% cotton because that's going to give you, uh, among other things, good longevity. I mean, there are things that were done on 100% cotton paper uh, several hundred years ago that are still in existence today. So look for cotton. Um, that's always a good material. And then acid-free and of course archival. So I'm gonna I'm just running through these kind of quickly but I wanted you to pay attention to this. So what I did on this Stillman and Burn Epsilon series which is a hundred pound paper is I applied the watercolor pretty heavily and you'll see what it did to the paper there. It just bowed it. Just kind of warped it. And I'll show you a little side view of it here. You can see for yourself is if you get too much water on paper that's exactly what will happen to it. But then if you use like 180 pound, which is 80 more pounds uh, on the paper, and I, and I put it on just as thick in this uh, beta series, you can see it's not really warping the card too much. And then the next one I, I'm using here is a delta series, which is a thicker type of watercolor. And I turn it on, on the side here so you can see kind of the difference um, in uh, rigidity of the papers. Of course, that one on the right has, uh, left has a little less water on it than the one on the right, so you can see where it bends a little bit. So these Stillman and Byrne papers are really, from, they're no, they come in uh, sketchbooks. And today I'm testing out the Beta, Delta, Epsilon, and Zeta series. My favorite paper that I use from Stillman and Byrne is the Zeta, paper, uh, Zeta series, extra heavyweight, 180 pound paper, and I'm demonstrating it right here. Um, it's just an excellent all-around paper that I use. In, I mean, I buy the sketchbooks. Paper comes in the sketchbooks. I find it to be durable. It doesn't bend a lot, and I just really like it. 
The next one I'm testing out here is this Fabriano Artistico Extra White paper. It's a 140 pound premium watercolor paper made in Italy. Um, the Italians have been making, uh, Fabriano in particular has been making paper for about 750 years, so they, they get it right. This next one is just a Canson Bristol 100 pound paper that you can get in notebooks, and I really like it. It, it seems to hold its shape well, even if I soak the paper and it, it just does a great job. The next one is the Canson XL. This is a standard like uh, mixed media note uh, sketchbook paper you can buy, but one thing I noticed about this is maybe just because of its lighter weight, it doesn't hold its shape as well, and you get a lot of warpage and bumping like I, I'm showing you here on the back side of this paper. That's, uh, that's a little bit of a concern because even when you close the notebook, you'll still have... Uh, you'll still see where it's misshaped. So out of the papers I tested today, I really like the Artistico uh, by Fabriano. This is just outstanding, excellent paper, holds its shape well, um, can hold a lot of water. I'm even trying some uh, you know, layering techniques over already dry color. And then my other favorite paper is the Zeta series, the extra heavyweight. Like I said, I, I, get, I buy these sketchbooks and they're not cheap but I buy them because they're just excellent. They can hold a lot of mixed media, um, you know, whether that be acrylic or ink or you know, watercolor, even oil, and it doesn't seem to warp the paper at all. Um, one of the tips to, do, to look for though, and I may have mentioned it, but 100% cotton paper is good, a good bet uh, if you can find that. And um, I'm not sure if the Sil Stillman and Burn is 100% cotton. All I know is it works excellent for my application. Now you can see here on that Fabriano, the 25% cotton paper, there's a little warpage up where that blue color is on top. You can kind of see it. And that does not have a tendency to go away uh, unless you put this underneath some pretty heavy weight. And also on that Canson, you can see the back where it just kind of misshaped uh, the paper and, uh, and it bubbles a little bit. So I'd, that'd be a mild concern for me. Well, I also have to thank the folks over at Savoir Faire for sending me along the Raphael brush. That's a soft aqua Raphael number no. four brush. Uh, you see just off to the right-hand side there. And um, it's imitation squirrel hair brush. But it just works good and holds lots of uh, water and paint in it. And uh, you're able to cover a lot of area with a brush like that. Now, you're not going to do fine work with that brush um, necessarily, but for just basically applying uh, color or blocking in, it just worked excellent. So I appreciate that. It's got a nice wood handle and you can tell it's well constructed. Um, I'd recommend it uh, if, you, if you're looking for a good, good brush for watercolor. Um, and the paints I used today were uh, Schmenka Horadam Aquarell uh, paints and they're just always excellent. Um, you can see sort of the warping in a couple of these papers here, but I should say in defense of some of these papers, they don't claim to be watercolor paper at all. I just try watercolor on almost every paper I get just to see how it holds up with a mixed media. Now some papers claim to be a mixed media, but they really don't hold up uh, under use. And, and uh, we'll talk more about other types of papers in another video. But today I just wanted to show you some of the, some of the papers I use and some of the best ones out there. And I said, uh, Artistico by Fabriano is just an outstanding, great watercolor paper. Uh, if you're a watercolor artist, you already know that. And then the Stillman and Burns Zeta series, if you're gonna do sketch, uh, sketching and you wanna use it for, uh, you wanna apply watercolor and things like that. Well, if you haven't done so already, please uh, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment or a question. I always like to respond to them. Thanks for checking out the video today. So long, everybody.